Hello students, this is a quick talk introducing the basic idea of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, the first uh, question we might ask even before, what are the gifts? Well, are they necessary in some sense? And, well, the way to figure that out is, well, necessary for what? That's the proper question to ask. Let's look at some of the things that Jesus asks us to do. Love one another as I have loved you. Whoever wishes to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. And finally, and this is the really odd part, Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Hmm. Well, if we're supposed to love as Jesus loved and he was crucified, and if we're supposed to take up our crosses and the cross is an instrument of torture, then how can that be easy and light? And the answer is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts are necessary because Jesus asked us to, asked us to do things that are impossible without the Spirit's help. If he's not there animating us, driving us in doing these things, well, those, all those things that Jesus wanted us to do won't come to pass. So even if the, uh, the gifts are necessary, well, then we have to ask, okay, well, if they're necessary, well, then what are they? Now, there's an important distinction between two things that can move us in our, in our souls. There's the idea of reason, so our, our intellect, and then there's God himself who touches the depths of the soul. And reason is perfected by things like faith and hope and love. Those perfect our souls. But it's still we still operate on a very human level, even with those things. But with God himself, when, when, when he moves us in a particular way, well, then we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that the gifts make us docile to or open to his inspiration. In other words, it's kind of like, uh, being uh, the female partner in a ballroom dance, that she is the one who uh, is led and directed, and, and the best uh, female dancers will be able to pick up on very slight cues from their dancing partner, and that will allow them to move quickly and easily wherever they're supposed to go. Well, God in this part would, would be the role of the male dancer. So for all of us, we have the, the more passive part. We're supposed to respond to what he's asking us to do. We're supposed to be docile. Here's kind of the summary of it. That the, the virtues, faith, hope, love, make Christian life possible, but the gifts of the Holy Spirit make it easy, or at least easier. St. John uh, Damascene uh, drew this analogy. He said, faith, hope, and love are like operating a rowboat. Our soul is the rowboat, and faith, hope, and love make the rowboat row in the right direction. But when you're rowing your boat in the right direction, it's a lot of work. Things go slowly. It's tough. But if you put up the sail on your boat, well, then you just have to sit back and you let the wind do the work. And the sailboat is like the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that somehow they fill us and they make what, what by our own efforts would be very difficult, they make it easy. Why? Because the Holy Spirit himself is powering the motion forward. Now, this is important to note. The virtues, faith, hope, and love, are the foundation of the gifts. If you don't have faith, hope, and love, then you cannot have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If, you don't, if you're not connected to God by love, you have none of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, But you cannot love what you do not know. So love requires faith. So faith leads to love, and love leads to the gifts. And that's the essential thing to, to write down there. That faith is the foundation of love, and love is the foundation of the gifts. Aha, see, I caught that spelling mistake there. Just to give one quick example, this is a picture of St. Dominic, and there's a legend told, or stories told about St. Dominic, who was, you know, very, um, so filled with the joy of God, so much longing to see him, that one day he was traveling upon a road, and he heard that there were two men lying in wait to assassinate him. And... He uh, he saw them approach, or somehow, I forget the story, I think he knew exactly that they were there and that he was going to be martyred. And he was so joyful at the thought of being able to give his life to God that he began singing out loud and very happily. And his assassins were so moved by his joy that they decided not to kill him and went on their merry way. Okay. So it's an example how, you know, Dominic was able to stare death in the face and have this supernatural outlook on it that it was it was his chance then to meet his lord 
apparently Jesus decided he was going to stay around for a little while longer. But anyway, Dominic was, was happy to, uh, to do it if that was what God had asked of him. And that day, it was not what God had asked of him. But Dominic was joyful to receive whatever God sent. And that kind of joy in the face of something so terrifying is the work of the Holy Spirit and the gift of courage in particular.